greatest intro I've seen. Oh. And I got, we got a lot of Raiders fans here, don't we? It's, it's okay. Step one is admitting the I problem. Was, I was going to say, there were so many handsome people in the crowd, I assumed they were Jimmy handsome fans. Yeah, yeah of course. Look, oh. I've been to a Cardinal game when, when the Raiders fans are there. It's dangerous. It's, it's, it's a situation. Let's just say we don't take our kids. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. What's up? Oh, my goodness. Okay, Cheers. okay, okay. No lie. No lie. This crowd is lit. Yeah. Like, oh. Especially that guy over there. Yeah. Well, he's, he's, he's still wearing the Stone Cold shirt. <laughs> 10 years too, 12 years too late. 12? <laughs> For 15 Keep years going. too late. Keep going. Hey, welcome. Step three on the fantasy tour. Oh my goodness. The People's Fantasy Tour. We can't even remember what we're talking about. We have, got, we have got a great show tonight. I've never been more excited for a show. Wow. Brand new this, segment. Oh, a brand just, new segment. Just for you. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have fun on the quick question. We're going to give this bad dog away. A signed Jimmy G helmet. If you don't... Yeah, it better not be a Seahawks fan. We're, we're looking at you. Yeah, for goodness sake. Oh, we got 12th man over here. Yes, Let him have it, baby. baby. It finally feels good to be in the... Be in the West? Yeah. Yeah. All right, hey, give it up for Brooks. Yeah! Brooksie! The judge! Oh, he takes a bow. It doesn't get any better. And, and for you spitballers lovers, Al Borland is out for the in the heezers! That's right, that's right. You guys ready for a show? You guys ready for a mailbag drop? I can't wait for the mailbag. Oh my goodness. This mailbag based on the introduction, unless they tire out, this mailbag drop is going to be we're, sick. The, the, I've looked at the crowd. I've Are you okay, by eyes. the way? I'm perfectly fine. Jason almost took you out. Oh, he, look, no, my back is strong. In fairness, you said do it for real. Well, I said go over me. <laughs> you didn't make it. I can't do that. That's a, that's a tough ask. But I've, I've looked in the hearts, I've looked in the minds of these beautiful men and women. They will not be getting tired before the mail drive. All right, Brooks, we ready for a show? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. If, if you're listening at home and you can't tell, we're live. We're live! Yes, we're if live. in San Francisco. If you're listening at home and you can't tell, we're live. <laughs> you have a problem. Yes, you do. Welcome into the show. Stop number three on the People's Fantasy Tour. Brought to you by Pristine Auction. We're giving away a fine Jimmy G, Jimmy Handsome helmet oh, today. Oh, only the finest. We do have some... We do have some Raiders fans in the house. And that's okay. That's okay. Which is great. Because the Foot Clan comes from, comes All from everywhere. Yeah. All walks of life. I mean, Las Vegas representing, right? Different. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Get bodied. Oh, they are rowdy. They are rowdy. We have a great show for you tonight. We're going to hop into the time machine Ooh. on the show today, a little bit later. We're going to talk about some news. We've got a great quick question. If you still want to come to a live show, we've got two more left. Yep. You can't come to this one. You They're also already here. You also cannot come to the next one, unless you already That's got your true. tickets. That's true. It's sold out. So Phoenix is the last <laughs> one available to you at BallersLive.com. Like I said, we like to have a little bit of fun with the quick question, especially at the live shows. So today, we have a very special 
important question. It's very important. Uh, I want your best player to superhero comp. Mm, okay, God, I want mm. you to make the comparison. Superheroes I want you to make are the so case. hot right now. Superheroes are big. Christian McCaffrey is Superman. Uh, <laughs> Christian we, McCaffrey's brother is all here. All right, we've got the crowd's right. answer. And are you up first? Um, uh, what's you the order go, Why don't you go first? Yeah, sure, I'll kick why don't it you off go here. First. All right. The player I want to talk about and his superhero compadre is DK Metcalf, rookie wide receiver for the Seahawks. They are, look, and for those at home, they are booing the one Seahawks fan in the look, crowd. The reaction time by the Seahawks fan to realize we were talking about the Seahawks yeah, it was took a little yeah, bit slow. Was like 10 seconds later. Woo! Oh, yeah. It was, it was delayed like Metcalf's draft capital. Oh, oh. yeah. Get bodied, Metcalf. No, I like that a lot. He does. I mean, he looks big, though. I mean, all right. All so, right, so looks like I me. think this one is low hanging fruit. You should already know. You should be screaming out like, "I know who the superhero is." Green Lantern. DK, oh. Green Lantern. <laughs> what? He's just. You know, here's the thing about DK Metcalf. I think he's super creative. His imagination is unbelievable. It's just he's he's so thoughtful. No, it's the Hulk. It's the other green guy. <laughs> Come on, DK Metcalf is. The Hulk. And well, why? Explain yourself. Yeah. Why? Obviously, you've got the physique, right? A little you, bit. You, a little I bit mean, going on. Uh, so you've got that. He's clearly a, a, a freak of a nature. specimen. Specimen, yeah. just like the Hulk. Also, I think he's going to be a little less than a t tactician on the field. He's going to... Uh, a little un uncoordinated. Yeah, a little uncoordinated. Hulk smash? I, yeah, I, and that's the thing. Like, if, if the Hulk were to run routes in the yeah. NFL, I don't think he's going to score well on reception perception. <laughs> no, he's not. But I think he could still get the job done because he's a beast. And that's where DK Metcalf is. Look, He's not this great refined route runner, but he is literally a superhero on the NFL field, and it might not matter that he's not this great refined wide receiver. If Russell Wilson's rolling around, he can throw the bomb, and the Hulk can just go Hulk smash yes. and get it. So that's that's my player comp. Very nice, Jason. Yeah, oh. not bad. Very nice. I'll, I'll go next. I'll go next. All right, Andy's up. I want to talk about Jarvis Landry. Okay. Oh, Jarvis Landry. No, he's I a mean, great wide uh, receiver. Hard Knocks fame. Yes. Um, Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. But the thing is, is Jarvis Landry, and maybe this is low-hanging fruit here, but Jarvis <laughs> Landry is Robin. <laughs> right? I mean... He's the underwear Robin, right? The he's the underwear Robin. And here's the thing. Oh, Jarvis... Like, I hope Jarvis is not listening to like this. Like, if you're on YouTube or you're here at the live show, you'll be able to see the picture that went up, and it's not the most flattering thing. But I want, I want to paint a picture for you. Like, Robin is still a superhero. He's still... And, and Jarvis is still one of the best players in football. But you don't necessarily want to be the and mm. in fantasy football. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be Batman and Robin. Right. Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. You want to have Batman and Superman. Yeah, that would be better. And at uh, you know, at the end of a big fight, nobody's like, "Thank goodness Robin was there." Woo! So I think for your fantasy team. <laughs> oh, please, please, Jarvis, forgive us. Still a super. Not many people can be superheroes. I'm not. He's a superhero. Not He's many just people Robin. can wear that outfit. And for your fantasy team, I could pull it off. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. But for your fantasy team, it's not going to be enough. He's just the and. And I think, you know, Odell's Batman. So. All right. Mike, what you got? I'll jump in here. I want to talk about a man that I've been talking about this entire offseason because I just cannot stop myself. Can't get enough. New England Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman. He is mighty. He is mighty. They just boo he's strong. Look, and here's the thing. He's a little bit smaller, but guess what? Julian Edelman is Ant-Man. Of course. I heard a couple of people. On the, because it's there. Look, he's small, but you know what? Maybe he's just stronger when he's in his small mode. He is absolutely mighty. Does Ant-Man get hurt a lot? Uh, oh. well, he could. He's a little bit older. <laughs> he's, he's been angry. Paul, Paul Rudd gets hurt a lot. But here's, here's the thing. 
he he plays he plays much bigger than his size. And look at look, the only explanation possible for a beard of that magnitude is its ants. He's, yeah, no, that he makes sense. He has controlled the ants, and they are his beard. And that's uh, why you finished so high in the accuracy rankings. Right Absolutely. There. So Julian Edelman is right. Ant Man. So there's your quick question. Before we get into the news, and there's a lot of news to cover. There's, there's news to cover from the Bay Area that we're going to talk about. Um, I do want to give a very special shout-out to the team from St. Jude who has been supporting this entire yes. tour. Can yes, you give it absolutely. up for St. Jude? We're partnering with them on the tour. All the proceeds from the VIP meet-and-greet tickets went to St. Jude. A dollar from every ultimate draft kit goes to St. Jude. They've been amazing. Um, so we're proud to have them as a part of this tour. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, I thought we were going to lead off with some Bay Area news, but we're not. We're going to lead off with some news that broke today. Yeah. It might have broke just mere minutes after we took this player in our Scotty Fishbowl draft. But yeah. Melvin Gordon has informed the Chargers he will not report to training camp. He will demand a trade unless he receives a new contract. Look. So instantly, uh, the, the, the alarms are going off. And they, and they better be. They better be going off for a good reason. The blueprint is already there. Le'Veon Bell, it's, the circumstances were a little bit different because Le'Veon Bell was on the franchise contract, so he's not, it's like this weird limbo area where he's Because Melvin's contract, under not, contract. Right, he is under the fifth year option, he could be fined and, and things like that, but the blueprint is there, and Le'Veon Bell said, you don't want to pay me, I'm not going to play, and then guess what happened? Someone backed up the dump truck full of gold bullion and Le'Veon Bell ended up getting paid I talked about this a few months ago, right after the Le'Veon Bell contract. I said, you did. You did. I said, Melvin Gordon is looking at this. He's looking at what's happening. He's looked at what Todd Gurley got, and now he's looking at what Le'Veon Bell got. And he said, I sacrifice my body for this team every single day. And if you aren't going to commit to me, there's a chance You're going to have that, to quit me. There's, there's a chance that he may not show up. So how worried are you in actuality? Because we know that the two sides have been talking, negotiating. Right. If you're in that position discussing contract terms, sometimes the play is the public. You know, you go public. Yes. You let the team know, look, I'm willing to take this as far as I can. The, the Chargers, Phillip Rivers, long in the tooth. They, their, their window is small to get to the Super Bowl. The team should be motivated to sign him. How concerned are you in actuality? Like, we took him, eighth pick of our Scotty Fishbowl right, draft. Right. I think Austin Eckler was drafted by more Scotty Fish teams today than anybody including out there. Ours. Yeah, including ours. Including ours, yeah. But how, how worried are you, Jason? Uh, I, I will say this. So the, the real question that all fantasy owners have to ask and try to answer is, will Melvin Gordon lose time or potentially be on another team? I think the odds are scary high. Really? And the reason I think that, I know, Andy, you... We, we, you know, yeah, I'm we, on the opposite side. You're on the opposite side, so you can, you can make your case. My case is essentially this. This, the, the San Diego Chargers, and I, I, I'm not getting my words wrong there, shockingly, um, were a bad franchise. They've, they've run poorly. Uh, their owner is known as you know, not one of the best owners in the league. The, you look at what happened with Bosa when they drafted him on these rookie contracts that are already done, and you have him missing time. You, you also have a franchise right now that was one of the only franchises that lost Essentially, when they moved to Los Angeles, they lost their ranking despite moving to a bigger market in the NFL teams when it comes to evaluations. And the reason? They can't sell out stadiums that are for soccer and 25,000 people. This is a financial problem for the current Los Angeles Chargers. I worry that if he's asking for all this money, they've got Justin Jackson, they've got Austin Eckler, they, they want to have him, absolutely. They want to sign him. But I think this is one of those things where it's like, okay, you've got, the, you've got the championship window versus the actual constraints of the pocketbook. This is a team that, while the whole NFL does profit sharing, where the teams make their differentiation is in their ticket sales, and in that, their concessions, in their jerseys. And they're one of the dead last teams in the NFL in that revenue. And, see, they can't afford not to win. 
That, that's where I take it. Like, if you talk about opening the pocketbooks up, Justin Jackson weighs three pounds less than Austin Eckler does. They cannot afford to just have those two guys in the backfield, but if they and win, you cannot win with El Melvin But Gordon. if they win, if they win, you're ta- if we're just talking they financially, they have to establish themselves in Los Angeles. If they win, they will then be able for the next two years to sell out a 25,000-seat stadium. They're not going to make that money back. So I just that's where I that's come where from. That's where your concern I comes. I worry from it on a financial standpoint. All right. The Raiders have signed... First round rookie running back. Congratulations, Josh Jacobs. That, look, this, this um, is this is reminding fantastic. me of even the Raiders football. can sign their rookies. Come on, Chargers. So it took him a second though. Josh Jacobs gets a four-year contract, fully guaranteed. Woo! Takes a variable out of the equation, right? Yeah, it, Confidence with Josh Jacobs. He's locked in. He's the top uh, rookie running back in your draft. All right, not to be outdone, the 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Believes his surgically repaired knee will be healed and ready for a full workload by the beginning of training camp. Okay. Uh, he said the rehab p- process has gone really well. Knock on wood. We haven't had any setbacks. Confidence level in Jimmy Garoppolo. Look, the expectations were sky high last year right. with the offense. Kyle Shanahan, what they can do in it. They had to piece it together at quarterback. They had to piece it together at running back. Jimmy Garoppolo coming back, it's, it's one thing to say, okay, you've got your franchise guy back on the NFL field. It's another thing to say he's going to be a force in fantasy, right? So does this news do much by way of uh, encouraging you to take him higher in fantasy drafts? He's a late-round draft uh, pick for a reason. It, last year was very strange because w- when he came in and he kind of, when he was traded over to San Francisco, middle of the season, came in, and he was an absolute yardage stud. He was what you expect from a Kyle Shanahan quarterback. To start the year, you were not getting the, the type of fantasy numbers that we've come to rely from that system. So it was, it was a little bit strange. He, he still belongs in the late round, but he's, he is absolutely one of those guys. It's the late round dart throw that possibly Jimmy turns into a weekly start. Still handsome. Very, very handsome. Well, he hurt his knee. He didn't hurt his face. If he hurt thank his goodness. face, goodness. if he hurt his face, I'm done. But, yeah, I mean, look, this isn't, this isn't a rushing quarterback. Money his, his, well, he, that, that was the problem. Right. He, he thought he was a rushing quarterback. Uh, said, I'm going to get that extra that's yard. That's true. That, you know, that was just a dumb decision on his part. You just uh, accept the truth. But, I mean, he averages 11 yards on the ground a game. You know, when Carson Wentz injured his knee and came back, he hurt himself for fantasy because a big part of his game was rushing. And you didn't see that as much when he had the brace on and was coming back. I'm not worried about that for Garoppolo. So I'm okay with him. All right, we've got one more to get into. Now, Mike, you're going to like it. Coach Andy Reid. San Francisco, big fans of trains. Big, yeah, this is a trolley. This yeah. is a hype trolley. Oh, you never heard oh, of a hype trolley? Right. It's important. Uh, Andy Reid comes out. He says Damian Williams will be the oh. full-time starter oh. for the year. He has taken the challenge, said Reid. He wants to do this thing. He earned the right to be the guy. Ooh, don't and now stop it's there. a matter of production. you got to go do it, said Andy Reid. So this is... Is this hype? Is this... This is, this is life. I mean, this is not, what this... it is. Damien Williams is the starting running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, and he said, go out there, go out there and produce but let me, uh, let me, like you did last year. Let me ask you a question. Though. Okay. Look, if you like ice cream, or if, let's say, all you have to eat is ice cream, and you start telling yourself that ice cream is good for you, you, you might as well tell yourself that. You don't have anything else to eat. Sure. Andy Reid's options in the backfield, you might as well tell Damian he's the next Adrian Peterson. But Andy Reid... Because that's who he's talking to. But Andy Reid had every opportunity to go out there and get something healthy, and he stuck with the ice cream (laughs) because it's delicious. But he... Look. Look, I I think we can all agree that Andy Reid likes likes ice cream, okay? But... (laughs) But the reality is they had very limited cap space and very limited draft capital. So he's the guy. Now, (laughs) not not a a fan of that. Hey, the one guy that's allowed to make that joke is me. Um, No, the the reality is this this does matter. Like, I, I wanted Andy to keep going because... You know, Andy Reid says, you know, it's just a matter of can he produce. And I'm, I'm on record saying I don't think he's a great running back. 
But I'm also on record saying opportunity for running back matters a whole lot more than talent. There isn't a better opportunity than being in Kansas City's offense with Andy Reid. Right now, I, mo- I moved Damian Williams. He's my number 10 running back right Good. now. So he's an RB1. I'm, I'm, I'm I in. Would, I would never n- do that. He's 11 for me. Yeah. Look, by, by August, Damian Williams will creep into the back of the first round. No, he won't. Yes, he will. If he doesn't, then he's a value. A water bit! Water bet. Anytime you hear it, yes, he will. No, he won't. Yes, he will. No, he won't. Very mature. I'm not going to lie to you. The crowd really egged me on on that, but I like it. (laughs) All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you, as always, by Sleeper. And a reminder, Sleeper does not just break the latest news. They are the best fantasy platform and it's funny because you can start to see that on social now. Yes, you can. People, the the ground swell, mm. the lack of changes elsewhere. And sleepers um, in the house tonight. Give them a shout out. Come yeah, on. But the nice thing is, is as simple or as complex as a league uh, that you want, you can get it with Sleeper. Hey, Foot Clan, we want to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. We have been using them for years to make great easy, delicious meals delivered right to your door. They are America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. You can get seasonal recipes. All you do is you cook and you enjoy. They give you step-by-step recipes with pre-measured ingredients so there's no waste. You don't have to go grocery shopping and everything is made in about 30 minutes. You can say goodbye to the endless grocery stores because HelloFresh has you covered. There are great options. You can go vegetarian. You can go family meals. You can get stuff like the Hall of Fame Kraft Burgers. So delicious. They're flexible. They meet your lifestyle. It is very easy to change your delivery days, your food preferences, skip a week, whatever you need. It is fantastic. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, just go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers80 and enter footballers80 at checkout. It's like receiving eight meals free only at HelloFresh.com slash footballers80, promo code footballers80. All right, you guys ready for a brand new segment? Let's go. Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. They like it. They like it, Mike. I like how you add an extra 10, 15 seconds for the live shows, for those. Do I'm a man do. of the people. Give it what up for I Mike. Say? I mean, come on. I thank you. So here's the reality as fantasy owners. If we could go to the future and find those diamonds in the rough, find the players that did what some of the breakout players did last year. Or burned you. Or burned you. If you could know the future, it would go a long way. It would super help. Super and helpful. last year, look, a good example, the guy we'll talk about first is, look, can you identify this year's George Kittle? Mm-hmm. Because George Kittle, look, if you had George Kittle last year, whether it was... Very uh, happy. If you spent a Kittle, as I did, 44 fab and yep. picked him up early, or you invested late in your draft, I mean, this was a a tight end that broke out and offered you week-winning weeks over and over again to record-setting numbers. So if there was... Now, there's not always a George Kittle, but if there was, what are, who are the candidates in the upcoming season to be the next one? So, Mike's already Mike's already. So look, we're, 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 we're talking about a tight end that's going to break out. There may be a dance that you could do, and it involves my man Vance McDonald. This man does not have a farm, but he has the Vance dance. No pants required for the Vance dance. You may or may not know that. Look, last year, 72 targets, came down 50 receptions for 610 yards and four touchdowns. And here's what's happening with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Antonio Brown is gone. Jesse James are gone. That's 207 vacated targets, or over 30%. Over 30% of those targets are gone. And you could say, hey, Mike, the Pittsburgh Steelers, those passing numbers, they were inflated last year. Big Ben was throwing more than 
he ever has in his career. And I will say that's a very fair point. Let's take a look at the numbers. Let's give him 575 targets. That's, that's 100 fewer targets. That's still 172 missing targets that we don't know where they are going to go. And here's, here's a fun fact about Vance McDonald for last year. Receiving yards after contact. The aforementioned George Kittle, 338. That's a sensational number. Travis Kelsey, Zeus, a monster of a man, 239 yards after contact. Oh, little old Vance McDonald who caught way fewer passes, 213 yards after contact because he's not just one person. Vance McDonald is, in fact, two people because he pulled a temple of doom and he ripped out Chris Conti's heart and stole his soul. I he saw ab- you. He absorbed him and now he has the power of two people. Yeah. Yeah. Look, and, and this isn't like, this isn't a, a, a Ryan Fitzpatrick situation. I saw you watching that video today, too. Oh, I watched it maybe like over one, two, over or again. 23 times. Yeah. But it, it, this isn't Ryan Fitzpatrick where we know that he favors the wide receivers. This is Big Ben Roethlisberger who has utilized Big man. a tight end as his number two option. I mean, Heath Miller has multiple seasons of over, or I should say had, multiple seasons of over 90-plus targets. Vance McDonald, I don't like that his ADP is creeping up. Maybe we're talking about him a little bit too much, but I'm just just stop talking about him. I can't, man. This is my job. Go home. I'm, I'm here to talk Turn about Turn off football. the recorder. But I'm, I am very excited for the breakout potential of Vance McDonald. See, the thing is, is I buy into him as a potential kind of breakout tight end candidate simply because I don't buy – look, Juju – you can't do that much more. You can't go for, up. I mean, 1,426 yards for yeah, his Juju. His target volume can't it, really it go can't, up that So much. it has to go somewhere else. So then it's about Deontay Johnson or James Washington or Dante Moncrief. Right. Uh, oh! <laughs> Moncrief. So I, I do buy in um, on the fact. So are you investing in Vance? If, if, if I get... If, if Basically I don't get, an eighth-round pick right now. Yeah, so if I don't get... Travis Kelsey, I wait for Evan Ingram or a player who's going to be named. If I don't get them, then I start targeting Vance McDonald. I, I, will, say, I will say this. Uh, one of the things that you can see a lot in preseason is you see a lot of snaps from the tight end position. It's right. something that in years past when Peyton Manning helped Julius Thomas, Orange Julius, break out in Denver, you saw it on film in the preseason. Well, here's, here's the other thing. Who's the backup tight end in Pittsburgh? Thank you very much. It's Xavier Jalen Grim- Samuel. Xavier Grimble. Grimble? Yeah. Is that from you Harry know? Potter? No, it's the thing you put your phone in and it stabilizes it when oh, you're driving. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And get a nice steady cam shot. Yeah. Not a lot of targets. With Xavier Grimble. He's the one recording <laughs> yeah. Vance McDonald's Vance McDonald's. celebrations. So, yes. So the player that stood out to me on film all last year when all the hype was on Hayden Hurst and the higher draft capital was Mark Andrews. Yeah. And Mark Andrews is basically free in drafts. Mark Andrews, look, it's hard to be the next George Kittle, but from a physical perspective, he did some of the things that Kittle did. What what made Kittle so incredible? Humongous plays, right? Yes. Yards after catch. He's just a niner. They say, if you're a 49er, you're just imbued with By default, you're the best. I should have guessed. Yes. So, Andrews, not a niner. Not a niner. But his insane yards after the catch ability, you saw it with Kittle. You saw it with Mark Andrews last year in flashes. Lamar Jackson went his way. He had a 74-yard reception in Week 12, had a 68-yard touchdown in Week 16. And the truth is he's slowly creeping up the draft boards a little bit because Hayden Hurst can't get healthy. Again, they're saying be quiet. Don't talk about Mark Andrews. But the thing is, is he... He could be an incredible value. And if he's not, you didn't, you didn't invest that much draft capital in him. You roll him out there, see what you got. The hype is building for Mark Andrews, and I think he fits that mold of a big play guy. He's friendly on a quarterback learning to throw the football. And Lamar Jackson, that's the truth. So I think you got to look Mark Andrews' way. Well, and the thing about Mark Andrews is he was, uh, last year, behind Dallas Goddard, he was, many people's, including mine, Jason, you as well? Mark uh, I was Dallas Goddard and then Mark Andrews. Yeah, those that's two, what I'm saying. I love Mark both Andrews of those guys. Yeah. was the number two pass-catching option that we really wanted to see go to a fantasy-friendly place. He sort of did, but the problem was they drafted a tight end before they drafted a tight end, so it put this, 
this damper on the shine of what Mark Andrews could be, and you knew it was going to take some time before the Ravens realized that Mark Andrews should be the tight end who's featured in the pass game. Hayden Hurst is a good player, but it looks Andrews, like Andrews should be well the, be. Yeah, Andrews yeah. Sh- should be the one getting the targets. Yeah, and, and, All right, and, and, next George Kittle. Jason. Yeah, just to add to that, because I, I'm a big Mark Andrews fan. I, I, I think that he's an undervalued tight end. I love the idea of him stepping forward as that George Kittle, that late-round guy that goes forward. Once Lamar Jackson took over, he was on pace for 771 yards, which would have been the second most for any rookie tight end since the year 2000. So, I mean, you, we, we already saw the rookie break in, now the year two breakout for tight ends, which is really Ooh, common. Break in and break out. Break in, break out. New segment. You're a wordsmith. Thank you. All right, so, so mine, when, when I look at, okay, who's the next George Kittle? Now, you, you could interpret that as who's the late round tight end that you're going to get a good value on. But what, how I interpret that is, Who's the next tight end who's going to completely break out? Who's the guy that come to the next year's draft? You're like, okay, well, you got the big three or the big four, and then there's everybody else, the way that Kittle is now in that conversation with Ertz and Kelsey. And Which the, is, just to add to it, that's the yearly conversation. You have the haves and have-nots at the tight end position. Right. You got a few guys you're willing to invest right. in. And then you've got the rest, and you don't care what you get. So the guy that I think, uh, you know, you talked about, what, what's, a, what's a quarterback that loves tight ends. Jameis Winston yep. loves his tight ends. And O.J. Howard is an absolute beast of a man. Some O.J. Howard owners out there. Look, so he, here's the thing that I, I, you know, I don't know if, if all fantasy football players are familiar with all the different metrics of which which combine results matter for which positions? You know, the 40 time is built up for wide receivers, but that's not actually a, a very sticky. It's fun. It's fun, but it's not actually very predictive. Really, it's the offensive and defensive line, the trenches where the combine results end up being pretty good indicators, right? The only position of fantasy football where combine metrics really matter, well, it makes sense. It's in the trenches. Sort of. It's a tight end position. The tight ends who are the best, the Antonio Gates, the Kelsey, the Gronk, the Kittle, Greg Olson, Jimmy Graham in his heyday, these are like 95th percentile athletes, all of them. They are unbelievable athletes. Those are the guys that break out into the upper, upper tier. So you're saying I should have been a tight end? Is that what you're <laughs> Yes. Yes. No? Yeah. There was a nine in front of the five. Right, so... You said uh, fifth percentile, fifth right? Fifth percentile, that's right. Um, and and O.J. Howard is that. He's 99th percentile in almost every metric. He is a giant man who runs faster than everyone else, who has a great agility score. Those, you know, measurables break out in the NFL. And then if you look at, like, okay, well, what did he do? You know, rookie year Kittle, 5.7 fantasy points a game. O.J. Howard, 5.7 fantasy points a game. Ooh, that matches. Ooh, last year, you had Howard go up to 10.4 fantasy points a game. Unfortunately, Howard missed six games, right? That's why we're not, like, completely all in on him because he finishes the tight end 13 despite not playing for almost half the season. From his 16-game pace was the tight end 5, and that's in his second second season. So I think right now he's got a chance to break out. And then think about this. Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson were replaced by Brashad Perriman <laughs> and Scotty Miller. Everybody knows Scotty Miller, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Star yeah. Trek. Yeah. So the point is, there are extra... <laughs> while, while, you know, look, I love Godwin, I love Mike Evans, they're there. They're going to soak up some of those targets. That's 170 targets. So, a lot of those will end up going to O.J. Howard. So a little bit of pushback. If I had to question it, you have to pay up a little bit for O.J. Howard. You don't for Vance and for Mark Andrews. The injuries have been a problem. How concerned are you with that and the draft capital? I I think when you're in those middle rounds, which is still where he is, he's not a late round guy, but he's a middle round guy, I don't worry about the injuries that much because I want to win my league. And if I win my league, that means my guys were pretty healthy. I mean, the the reality is if you lose a bunch of your players to injury, it doesn't matter. You You don't want to finish third? Uh, I do not uh, want to. Uh, you know, here's no? here's the worst thing. The worst thing in the world is to be Brian Ketrin, right? Yes. I don't want to finish second like a loser. That's fair. <laughs> he's here tonight. Yeah. Where are you at? Yeah, yeah, he's here. Um, okay. All right. We're gonna jump back in the time machine. We're gonna find somebody else. Vroom. By the way, we do have a live mailbag coming up. Very soon. So San Francisco, get ready. Just answering questions live here at the Independent. But let's find. 
the 2019 version of Nick Chubb because he was a revelation for fantasy owners. He wasn't drafted. He was free. He was a rookie. He had those elite measurables. There were a lot of factors to the second half. People won their league because of Nick Chubb. Yes. And you, you had bought in Nick Chubb early. Yes. And then you saw the transition with that offense in, in Cleveland. Yeah. So, and, then you, and then you dropped him yeah. right, right whatever. before. Then I, got him, whatever. I got him back. It helped him out. All right. Here's, here's the rookie that I want to talk about. When you're going after these guys late in your draft, or you are, maybe you're not actually drafting these players, you're just keeping an eye and waiting a few weeks before you pounce because you know that the, that the change is going to come. Similar to Nick Chubb. You could, you could feel the transition happening for Cleveland because – Carlos Hyde, he was working out for fantasy because he was lucking into touchdowns, but he was not getting the job done. They ended up trading him throughout the middle of the season. You want to find ambiguous running back backfields where it, you're not really sure who exactly is the starter. And the most ambiguous backfield in the league, in my opinion, belongs to the Buffalo Bills. Is, is it Shady McCoy? Is it Frank Gore? They invested in a rookie, and his name is Devin Singletary. Here's the thing. Oh, a couple of people like him. All right. The running back cliff, it is absolutely a real thing for mortal men. Maybe someone on this roster is immortal. We're not exactly sure yet. One play. <laughs> in Frank Gore. Well, hold on. <laughs> Frank Gore did just turn 27 years old. He did. Yesterday. He did. Yes. yes. But here's, here's the thing. People talk about the running back cliff all the time. Is it, is it in touches? We had an old friend of this show, Joseph Wan, had a, a very compelling argument on number fire. He talked about it's 1,800 carries. Another great friend of the show, Mike Taglier, talked about the age cliff, generally speaking, is 29. So let's take a look at the running backs on the Buffalo Bills. Shady McCoy. Do we have to? Yeah, I'll make it brief. I'll make it brief. Shady McCoy, 31, uh, older than 29. 2,346 carries. That's a lot. Well over the cliff, and here's what happened. The last two years of Shady McCoy's career, the lowest yards per carry in his career, including last year's dramatic plummet to 3.2. Yeah, that's he, Thelma and Louise off the cliff. Yeah, yes, it done. is. He's done. And this is the final year of his contract. Frank Gore, who's in a one-year contract, he did have a little bit of a resurgence, but, but when, hold on, when he was the workhorse, when he was the workhorse for Indianapolis, you saw his yards per carry sub 4.0 all three of those years. Graham Barfield, who does a, a sensational look at rookie running backs, called yards created. Devin Singletary ran behind the worst offensive line in this running back class, yet he still produced over 125 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns per game over his final two years of his college career. I think that Devin Singletary could just be that guy. I'm not necessarily drafting him unless well, that, it's a very That's what I wanted league. to ask you. Are you. Is this somebody that you've just got like your, your, mon- no. your monocle glancing at him? You're not yes. drafting him? Yeah, yes. You're just I'm, peering I, over? I dress up as the Monopoly man. Yes. And I take a look and I say, pretty soon, Devin pretty Singletary. Pretty soon I'll put you on my uh, roster. Around week three or week four, I'm going to take a look at what's happening with the Buffalo Bills, we've, and then I'm going to stash Devin Singletary. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the Bills. And just how I think over the second half of the year, somebody's going to own the backfield. They want to run the football. They run it more than almost anybody in football. But right now you're staring down Gore, McCoy, Yeldon, Gross. and Singletary, and it's not fun. No. You want to go or you want me sure. to go? Sure. No, I'm, I'm going to hop in here because I, you know, this is a guy I've talked about a lot. I really like where he landed. I think he's a talented, well-rounded back. He fits the system, and I think he's going to succeed this year. It's the rookie for the New England Patriots. Uh, carry on, Johnson, not a rookie. It's Damian Harris. Great Scott. <laughs> yes. Great Scott. Yes. Uh, thank where, you, Doc. Where did that come from? Um, so here's the thing about Damian Harris, right? Like, let me, let me ask you guys a question. Nick Chubb, talented back, right? But why did he break out? What, what Opportunity. happened? Because Carlos Hyde was traded oh, away. Oh, Carlos Hyde was traded away. So you started with a team where you've got a player, and then that player was gone. They didn't have anybody else to just sign off of you know, free agency or in the draft because it was midseason. That player was gone. Chubb had the entire backfield to himself. I think that the odds are high 
that Sony Michelle misses games or more than just a few games and has another games knee injury. Or, games or, or games. 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 Ga- right. What's the plural of games? <laughs> gameses. It, he's, I think Sony could miss several gameses. <laughs> How many games? <laughs> Up to 16 games. <laughs> Look, Sony Michelle tore his ACL in high school, okay? Then he missed time at Georgia again with a broken shoulder, an injured ankle, and yet another knee injury. Then look, he was drafted last year and he had to have a procedure in August that caused him to miss the preseason, miss week one. Then after Week seven, with the Bears, he had another knee injury. Thank goodness he's passed all of that, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, he just had his knee scoped again? Yeah, he did. <laughs> the degenerative knee that is arthroscopic and, uh, like, the procedure I every day. I think he day. meant arthritic. Arthritic? Huh? <laughs> Dr. Jason is on it. <laughs> but the, I mean, look. When you arthroscopicize your knee, <laughs> you're going to miss some games. This <laughs> Here's... Here's, here's what I do. I'm fully convinced. <laughs> Thank you. I knew. Look, this is ironclad. Lock. Yeah. Yeah, they're with me. This is for me. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, but look, I think, I think most, most people trust the mind of Bill Belichick, right? That, when he that's tra- what it is for me. Is he- it's like you, can, you made all the case before he, he left college, and I'm like, well, Bill Belichick drafted him in the first round. So he must be right. Right. And then on day two the next year, he's like, ah, I think I'm going to need a running back. So he took Damian Harris <laughs> saying, like, I think he's concerned about the running back position for his team. And, and look, there's a lot of opportunity here because he's actually well-rounded. Damian Harris yeah, is great a good, well-rounded player. He's much more like Rex Burkhead. He can catch the ball. And look at what Rex Burkhead did when, when he wasn't injured. So, like, he finally got back healthy for the playoffs. He had three touchdowns in the first two playoff games, and that was with Sony balling out. So I think Damian Harris is good, but the opportunity to have Sony Michelle exit the team via injury and have a true workhorse back for a great offense that wants to run the ball and will have tons of goal line opportunities. And Damian Harris is free. He's not drafted in some leagues. Yeah, I, I know you love him. I know you love him. Maybe I, maybe I want Michelle to have all that opportunity so we can see what we saw in the playoffs. And it's hard for me to bank on like an injury, but when you talk about at least having a history that could lend itself that direction, now you're you're not drafting him. No, I am drafting you him are because drafting. I actually unlike to see the first few weeks of the season. Unlike Singletary, unlike Singletary, where I, I don't think any of us see a week one barring shady. No. you know uh, he he's not getting started. I think there is a world where Damian Harris, when Sony is there, performs well and is, and is a, a, a flex right. worthy candidate. Uh, this next player that I'm going to bring up is a guy I take with the last pick in every draft I'm in, pretty much. Yes, this is true. And uh, look, the world out here, it's focused on the return of Jarek McKinnon and the addition of Tevin Coleman. Now, I want, I want to take a serious poll here because we're in the Bay Area. Do, you get to cheer for either McKinnon or Coleman. Just Niners fans. Just okay. Niners fans. McKinnon or Coleman. I, I just want to see who you think is going to do better in this offense. So if you're a McKinnon person, I want to hear you clap. Clap if you're a McKinnon person. That's a smattering. That's light. Okay. It's yeah, a I'm little dismal. I want, to, I want to hear you clap if you're a Tevin Coleman person. Okay, so that more confidence. Our scientific poll is complete. I like new things, right? We like right. new shiny things. I, now listen, I'm, I'm bringing up the last pick in every one of my drafts because it's Matt Breida. Yeah. Now let me ask this, because this is just this is like taking candy from a baby here. <laughs> Do you think Kyle Shanahan is stupid? <laughs> no. no. And the reason that I believe Breed is the candidate to be that the next Nick Chubb, right? That next uh, second half Dynamo win you your league is because I don't think Kyle Shanahan is stupid, and and uh, he's a smart head coach. And last season, Burita ran for 5.5 a carry. In his career, which, you know, is it 20, 30, 40, 100 carry? No, it's 258 carries. He's a five a carry guy in his career through two seasons. He has, he's run for 10 or more yards on 17% of his runs. That is number one in football. That's 2% better? Who do you think as explosive? Alvin Kamara? 
Aaron Jones. Yes. He's 2% better than both of those guys last year. That's like your opinion, man. The argument... <laughs> fair, fair. The, the argument is simply that you don't put a guy that talented, that explosive on the bench, and if they're on the bench, they're not there for long. Six yards per touch. That was the same as Christian McCaffrey, who someone in this audience really, really liked. Yeah, we've been hearing about him. Um, which was, by the way, number four in the NFL. So the evidence is, look, if people cared, however, about what I was saying at all, or watched the film, or watched the games that I saw, he probably wouldn't be the 45th running back drafted. But So they don't listen. Oh, oh, but oh Andy. no! The public is breaking in. But Andy. Yes, Bopo. My name is Jeff. <laughs> what about Jeff Wilson? Yeah, no, no, I get it. It's, I just good, wanted to, I just wanted to see I what forgot Bopo was saying my name is Jeff would be like. And now I, I, I experienced that. Thank you. So you have no points. <laughs> there was nothing of substance there. So here's Much the thing. Much like your analysis. Uh, yes. Ow. Get money. Don't worry, guys. I can't Ow. hear him from up there in the rankings. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. I've been buried. That sucks, Mike. Get bodied. <laughs> All but, right. But Burita's my favorite. So All right. that's my guy. So we'll, we'll do one more, then we'll get into the live mailbag. Um, I think this one's an important one because all last offseason, look, players get hype. Players get attention. Players get excitement. They look like great values. Wouldn't it be nice to know who the 2019 Alex Collins was? Yes, it is. Be. So And is. So that you... <laughs> I guess well, that's fair. The 2018 Alex Collins was Alex Collins. The 2018 Alex Collins was. Yes. yes. But the thing is, is, if you could see those minefields, hop into the time machine, pull out the almanac, see who's going to let you down, there was a lot of excitement around Alex Collins, the way he finished, the way his second half was the year before. He had this great yards per carry. Was it misleading? 4.6 yards per carry. What do you think? Who's, who, who's the right. minefield? All right, I'm going to jump very in here. Very important. Because people are very excited, very excited about this running back who was, quite frankly, he turned into a championship running back. If you picked him up at the right time, he literally carried you. You jumped on his shoulders, you benched the rest of your team, and you played this guy, and you still managed to win because over the final four games he had... 585 <laughs> rushing yards. It, it's funny to hear it out loud. Yeah. And, of course, I'm talking about Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans. Look, judging by the response, people are not too happy I'm saying this. Yeah, they all kept him. Yes. Look, the, remember when I said he had 585 rushing yards in the final four games? In the season, he had 1,059 yards. That means that... Uh, there was a certain percentile of his rushing yards that came in those final four games. Oh! Normally, I'm really happy about that, but over half of your rushing yards in four games, uh, that's a little bit of a of su suspect things going on. And look, here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. 18 targets on the year. You can't rely on running backs who are not getting targets to draft them that high. In high-stakes leagues, high, the people are spending a lot of money to play. They are drafting Derrick Henry above Aaron Jones, Marlon Mack, Devonta Freeman, Carrion Johnson. Boo. When, like these, this is absolutely insane to me. Because, look, it wasn't... The, like, this was not Derrick Henry's first... Carry on my I'm a sucker, man. I'm a sucker. I got carry on bombs. I've got it. It's like one button. I just have to push it. I'm they, in this heated rant. It's tough, man. Sorry. Okay, but here's here's the deal. Do this you want me to hit the Derrick Henry button? Yes, <laughs> please. Thank you. That's such a lie, though, because your story is why I didn't recommend him in the two other weeks. He right. was incredible, so I feel like I'm a fool. But, but this was not Derrick Henry's first year in the league. We have seen plenty of Derrick Henry. In fact, it was not the first time this season that the Tennessee Titans game plan was give Derrick Henry the ball. In weeks two and three, he carried the ball 18 times per game, and it didn't work out. Look, they think, they think that, the, that they have it all figured out. 
and we're just going to give Derrick Henry the ball. He's going to rip off 99-yard touchdowns every single week. It's going to be fantastic. Marcus Mariota doesn't need to do a thing, and fantasy drafters are buying in, and Derrick Henry will be this year's Alex Collins, and people are going to be very upset they drafted him. Oh, that's a bold take, Mike. See, I, I thought you were going to tell me in high-stakes leagues they were smart in taking him after those guys. No. You're saying everybody's a fool but you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I, I, I got a time machine. I yes, agree with the, the I mean, lack of pass catching, but I, I I do think he's gonna succeed on the ground this year. So I'm I'm not I'm not as anti. You're on an right. island apparently. Yeah. All right. I, I'm gonna bring up Philip Lindsay's name. And I want first I want you to know, like, like he has a giant undrafted tattoo on his body. Yeah. Like I love this guy. Last year, I feel like this is the least biased take I could ever have because last year. I picked him up everywhere. I signed him when the chants of Royce Freeman were coming from everyone else. I picked him up before the season began in one of our leagues, signed him on the waivers in another league, rode him to a lot of success except for in the last three weeks. And the thing is, is I absolutely adore what he did. It's it's an amazing story. But there are similarities between the Alex Collins story and the Philip Lindsay story. They were both undrafted free agents. Collins was a fifth round pick. I mean, he got cut immediately. So that's okay. It's pretty close. Pretty close. And but last year, talking about 306 is where Collins went. This yeah. year, I'm surprised. People must be listening to this show. I am. He's 407 now. That's where Philip Lindsay is. So he is starting to trickle down in draft boards a little bit. And I don't have any desire to doubt Philip Lindsay. But things went so very, very right for him last year. But Royce Freeman was banged up all of last year. Philip Lindsay, he's a plotter who faced a lot of eight-man fronts. Yes. That's the truth, more than anybody in football. And he still ran over for a carry. So the thing is, is you got a new head coach, you got a new quarterback, you got a new offensive system, you injured yourself at the end of the year, you did slow down. Two of the last three games, he was two points something a carry. So I just think that with the struggle to end the season – the fact that I do believe in the talent and ability of Royce Freeman, which I know you do, Mike. I love I know him. He's a talented player. It doesn't take much. Think about it. If you lose three carries a game, over the course of the season, you're going from being a guy that maybe was going to be a 200, 220-carry guy, you lose 45 carries. Do you want Philip Lindsay at 160, 170, 180 carries? No. Is that going to do an – you do. I mean, you want him, but you might not want him as fourth-round draft capital is my right. point. So I think there's some traps there. People don't like it, but uh, I think it's an honest take. Yeah, I mean, Alex Collins had 200 carries on the season. Nobody was happy with, with That's that. That's true. So, yeah, we were looking at that today. Look, my Alex Collins comp for this year is... Oh, I'm so surprised. Oh, this has to I'm hurt so you. surprised. It is the same exact situation with one exception of capital. It's in the same backfield. It's Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram this replaced... Is shocking. Yeah, you can be shocked, but here's what we know. Mark Ingram has replaced Alex Collins in that same system, the same coach, the same guys behind him, Gus Edwards. There's a lot of Justice Hill fans here today. They went and they signed or they drafted Justice Hill. You have Mark Ingram. Look. Justice Hill's family is in the audience, apparently. Yeah. (laughs) Big Justice Hill fans around here. My goodness. So here's the thing. So like I, you know, when I was when I was researching this, I I, I took a look at what's being said to Mark Ingram. What what's the expectation for beat writers? All of that, and it, you know, I found this article where Gus Edwards was talking about he had talked to the coaches before. They he knew they were going to go out and find a veteran free agent to help share the load with Gus, and they were going to basically have a one-two punch. And so what did they do? They went out and they signed a back who his whole career has been part of a one-two punch. This is not a guy who's going to just carry the load and come in and be like, well, the Baltimore Ravens run the ball so much, we're just going to give him the ball all the time. I would rather have Mark Ingram in a timeshare for the Saints oh. than for the Ravens. Look, I know the Ravens want to run a lot, but you know the touchdowns aren't going to be there for the Ravens like they were for the Saints. Most people were disappointed with Mark Ingram last year. He had some good games, had some bad games. I think right now Mark Ingram's going at the back of the third round. That is way too high. You've still got Gus Edwards on that team. What did Gus Edwards do last year? Once Lamar Jackson took over, he was a beast. He was a beast. He was on a 16-game pace of 1,500 rushing yards. They're not just going to be like, all right, well, Mark Ingram's here. Sit down, please. Like, the guy <laughs> is a good running back. If the guy making the decisions talks like that, I want 
end on that organization. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, to me, I just think his draft... Take a seat. Is to take I'd be like, a sure, seat, that's cool, whatever you say. <laughs> it's me, David Gittleman. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to me, it's just, it, it's, the, it's the same situation with the same players behind him. I think we'll be disappointed in the draft capital. I like you know, I like no one's room. been. Ex- it's weird. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not around the right Mark Ingram fan circles. But it's shocking to me he's going where he's going because I haven't heard people excited about it. This is a team that runs the football a ton, but nobody's like tooting like the, the ceiling for Mark Ingram. Everybody's like, yeah, he's not that high. Right. I, I don't know why he's back in the. And third. then Justice Hill. A lot of people like yeah. Justice Hill. And, and it, here's the thing. I don't that that worries me a bit about Mark Ingram. Like I said, for Derek Henry, I want running backs who will also catch the ball. So you talk about if he's sharing time with Gus Edwards, and yes, to his family, Justice Hill is a good running back who's going to catch the ball. He's going to be used as a pass catcher. You raised, you raised a nice young man. Yes. Yeah, good work, everybody. All right. We're stepping out of the time machine. We're, hit, we're hitting the live mail back, which means... If you, you need to prepare yourselves. If, if you were one of the lucky pre-selected few for the live mailbag, please approach the mic. What, are they behind me? I think they're behind you. I'm not trying to be around really, for them. It's going to be really awkward. Oh, maybe they're coming out here. So please so, line up. The uh, rest of we've you, We've already San got Francisco. New York and Chicago in the books, so we know yeah. what they brought. Uh, you guys ready? I want to feel it in my bones. I want you to knock Jason out of his chair. Here we go. Bag. Did you get a little spit? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. They were, they're, they're very happy with themselves. They have raided their own mailbag, and they approve. <laughs> that was pretty right, good, though. San that was Francisco, pretty good. We though. did a great job. That's right. <laughs> Let Jason do it. No, 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 no. You, I think you took care of it. I All think right. you took care of it. Who's All up? Right. Uh, first question. Who's up and where are they? In the dark. In we got any house can lights we can throw up a little bit? Maybe? It's All the way, wait, 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 wait. Keep them down until Russell Wilson's gone. <laughs> yeah, boo. What's All your right, name? what you got? What's your name and your question? Guys, All right. Chill out. Go Hawks. Whoa. Okay. Go Hawks. I nice. just got him quiet. Yeah. All right. All right. Keep cool, my babies. All right, Ballers. Uh, Brian here. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of mock drafts lately, and I find myself liking a lot of later. Well, like I find myself um, getting wide receivers late. Guys, guys, that I, that, we, that I like we can't question. answer a question we can't hear. So let's let him speak. Yeah. So I like a lot of late wide receivers, and I find myself not liking very many late running backs. So does that entice you to draft? running back somewhat early, or what's your guys' approach? I mean, yeah, I think that's just the nature of the position. I mean, I'm the same as you. Yeah. I like late wide receiver shots. I mean, we talk all about Robbie Anderson, and Dante Pettis, Deshaun Jackson. I mean, I, I do want to put myself in a position to where, you know, what I believe about those guys, I, I want to take them. I want to put a, It's hard to find running backs, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean just, the issue here is like, okay, there's plenty of wide receivers you like at the back of the draft. And there's probably not a lot of running backs you like. I mean, you, you get to that 10th round and you're running back Oh, my options. gosh, 10th round, you're, 7th round, you're in trouble. Well, I mean, you're going, man, do I want Jordan Howard? Look, in, in the 10th round, you're deciding between Curtis Samuel, a really good option at wide receiver that could really hit, or Edo Smith. Like, those, those are not in the same tier. They're going back to back. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you. I started this season... Um, in most of my mock drafts in my early leagues, thinking like I, I, I liked some of the depth at running back, and I really wanted stud wide receivers early. I liked that approach, but what happened was the end of the draft. The end of the draft was like, well, now I, now I need running backs, and they, these guys all stink. So, you know, in the future, I, I started swip, you know, swip swatching, as I always say. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes. Yeah, I, I'm still an early. So you recommend back. he switch, switch, swap? Switch swap. Okay. Switch swap. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. Sir. Appreciate it. You got to hit it. Next question. Thank you. What's up? Make Hello, sure guys. you speak up loud into the mic. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Um, so, with the upgrades to the offensive line and the best wide receiver duo in the league, 
Um, Kirk Cousins, will he emerge as a valuable fantasy quarterback this year? Ah, so we're so talking the, Kirk Cousins. Did that, he start that with, with the, like a good offensive line? Well, he started, he said upgrades, upgrade. and then he toot tooted his own team's wide receivers. Here's the thing. Nicely done. Is whatever you want to believe about Minnesota's offense and where they're headed this year, Cousins fits into the mold of post-hype sleeper. So if you believe the things that you talked about your team and the, look, their offense, I think I just saw something, that, some publication the other day, they ranked them the fe- fifth best offense in the league. Um, that's what they believed about the offensive line upgrades. And, you know, when you have two wide receivers, it compensates for a lot. Dalvin Cook back and healthy. You believe a lot of good things about him. I think that makes Cousins a post-hype sleeper. I'm not, like, targeting him in yeah. drafts. Here's the thing about Kirk Cousins. As a starter, he's never thrown for fewer than 4,000 yards. I mean, that's, that seems to be the benchmark that you want a quarterback to be able to hit. 4,300 yards and 30 touchdowns. People are just upset at the way that it so He was came. going high. He, I mean, he went high in drafts last year. Yeah, and he started out extremely hot. I'm, I'm, I side with Andy that he's a post-hype sleeper, like, uh, we, you know, we were talking to the crowd. We like Jimmy late, but Kirk Cousins is one of those late round quarterbacks that it's take a shot. V- it, he very well could just be your quarterback for the entire season. Eh, yeah, I disagree. Forty three hundred yards and thirty touchdowns. Forty three hundred yards and thirty touchdowns. Which, if you look at the pace of the beginning of the year, is the whole and only reason why he had that. The, then they fire their offensive coordinator and they change their methodology they have dalvin cook rumors out of minnesota you know in the goal line package it's all about dalvin cook this is a team that has a great defense right right and they want to be able to run the ball i think they will be able to run the ball so if if you think about pace of play right like the vikings are not going to be one of those offenses that runs near the top in the league and plays the way that a Kansas City is or something like that. So I think he's a good quarterback. If you're in two quarterback leagues, that's okay. I Obviously, if he hits... You'd take Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford. I would take Cousins over Matthew Stafford. Kirk Cousins, Jameis Winston. I would take Winston. Okay. For sure. All right. Thank you, sir. Good question. Thank you. Next they, they would take question. Derek Carr. Derek Carr. What's up, ballers? What's up? What's My up? name's Nick. From the Turf Toe League, greatest league in the United States. A league shout out, very impressive. No, no, no. He he said best league in the states. Okay, well that's you a can't fact. challenge it. Your question, sir. Assuming I can't get any of the top twelve tight ends, I can't do the Vance dance. I got to get a late round tight end. Who should I be targeting? <laughs> well, so, the, the names that keep coming up at the end, end like desperation, are. Names from Very five years ago, a lot of the times. Yeah. So you talk about Jordan Reed, talk about Greg Olson, Delaney talk about Delaney Walker, Walker and yeah. Tyler Eifert. Like all of them are, believe it or not, starting tight ends <laughs> in the NFL with a track record of productivity in the NFL. So maybe you don't want to play roulette there. Is there a younger, I mean, up and coming, exciting I love, name? I, I love. I was going to bring up Greg Olson, Delaney Walker. They're going very late, boo-boo, but boo-boo, boo-boo, behind boo-boo. all of those guys is Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is well outside of the top 12. You're going to get him with your last pick in any league you want, and I'll just throw one other name out there. I know. you're a, He's in bay. It's not going to happen, but <laughs> Dallas Goddard is great. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Give me. Secondary tight ends. Yeah. You can find them right here. All right. All right. Thanks for your question. Thank you, sir. Next question. Hey, ballers. My name is Matthew, and I'm a commissioner of a new dynasty league this year. And really, the only thing that I'm struggling with is guys, what would you guys think is the ideal roster for a 12-team league? I just don't know how to get the roster down. I don't know how many starters, how many bench I should put there. For first, a 12-team? Yes. For 12-team dynasty. Yes. First things first, get rid of kickers. No joke. Yeah. Get rid of kickers. Kick them out. I normally play two kickers. No? It's, it's weird. So in dynasty, I prefer to be no kickers, no defense. Defense can be fun. Um, but uh, kickers in dynasty is just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. Uh, the, you're, the, the way that I want to run it, I want... I want the standard starting. I want two running back, two wide receiver, but I also want to have two flex players. And then I want that bench. I want, I want at least 30 total players, and I highly recommend the taxi squad. 
it, it, it creates a, an opportunity where once you draft your rookies, you're not like, oh, crap, i got to cut all these players that I've been waiting on them to break out. Instead, you can just put your rookies on the taxi squad, let them develop, and that way there's not it, – it, you, you haven't had to cut your losses on a player that you, you know they're going to break out. You just don't have room for them. Yeah. All right, I, one last thing I wanted to add. All right. Sure. Matthew is the winner Whoa. of the helmet. So can you give it up for Matthew? Mike, hand it off. Hand off that handsome helmet. A special thanks to St. Jude once again. Aww. The helmet has been raised like Simba. Yeah, will it fit? I don't know. He's trying to put it on. Probably yes, not. I wouldn't do that. Uh, but thank you to up. Pristine Auction for the support on this tour. We've been giving away a lot of free stuff. You can check them out. Thanks to St. Jude once again. Thank you, San Francisco, yes, for an incredible show. Thank you so much, San Francisco. And Farewell, listen, my friends. We're going to be hanging out after the show, trying to meet as many of you as we possibly can. Just give us a couple minutes to clean things up, and get we'll it set up. And then we'll be back. But thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.